recording this session right now. Um, so good morning to, to most of you. Um, it's morning where you are. Welcome to this advanced newsletter training class. Um, it's welcome back to those who've attended one of my webinars before. Um, for first timers, um, my name is Jane, that's me on screen now. I'm the Product Marketing Manager at Snapcoms and I'm based in Auckland, New Zealand where it's 9 p.m. already on Tuesday night. And I'm assisted today by Ellen Rollins who, as you know, is your um, UK um, and Europe Customer Success Manager. It's 5 a.m. on the East Coast where Ellen is based. So welcome Ellen and thanks for your support at this early hour. Hello. Good morning everyone. All right. Oh, sorry, that's Ellen's photo. I almost forgot to add her, but I'm sure most of you know what Ellen looks like. Um, just before we start some webinar house rules, I am recording this session, as I said, and you will receive a copy, copy of the recording by email probably tomorrow. And as attendees, you are muted on the webinar, but of course, that doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you. Um, please use the questions feature in the GoToWebinar um, panel to send your questions at any stage. I really don't mind interruptions. So to ask a question, click on the orange um, arrow that I'm indicating on screen. That will expand your GoToWebinar panel and you just type your question in the question box. Ellen will be monitoring the questions and she will make sure that I see them. She'll interrupt me. Um, when she can. So my session is, is pretty full today. We've we got about 50 minutes of, of me demonstrating. Um, so there should be a few minutes at the end for questions. Um, here at Snapcoms, we, as you've probably noticed, continuously improving the newsletter and adding new features. So the product team here are very interested in any feedback you have um, on the newsletter and any requests that you have for further features. So don't please don't be shy at all. So um, in the class today, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a typical internal communications newsletter. I have seen quite a few examples sent through from customers on, on what is typically included or what's required in the newsletter. So I have um, borrowed from our very own Snapcom staff newsletter. It's a monthly newsletter and it's called Our Connection. And this is the September issue. So let's take a look at that now from um, my content manager. I'm going to open my Snapcoms app and I'm going to open up the newsletter onto screen. Um, as you can see, it's got a couple of sections, header at the top, table of contents on the left, a comment from the CEO, a ticker announcing two upcoming events within the company, a sales update with a chart um, introducing a new person this month, a marketing update, and then um, a list of new customers onboarded this month. So as I said, fairly typical um, customer newsletter. Now, the general premise with, with setting up newsletters in Snapcoms is that once you've created this first one, you convert it into a what we call a content template, which can be used as the base for all your subsequent newsletters in the same series. So I'm going to show you how to do that right at the end of the session. Um, Let's look at the class format then. I'm going to get going and take you through the initial setup of the branding of the newsletter. We'll discuss dimensions and padding of the newsletter, well, and how padding works, what it is and how it works. I'm going to show you how to add icons to headings. Um, I'll show you how to use a table to format images and text um, next to each other. Well, I'll show you how to add that ticker with multiple headlines. I'll add a slideshow and at the end we will compile the table of contents um, and as I said we'll then convert it into a content template for reuse. Um, before I proceed though, um, just to help me pitch this training um, at the right level, I'm going to put a poll on your screen. Um, oops, just fiddling around. Launching the poll now. Um, if you wouldn't mind asking um, if you actually have ever created, um, used the Snapcoms uh, newsletter before. So three options here. Yes, you have successfully created and published the newsletter. Um, yes, you've managed to draft one, but you haven't yet published it. Um, and no, you have not yet created one. Okay, great. Those responses have come in and um, 
pretty much two thirds of you have not yet created it. So that's that's good to know. Um, a third of you have published. That's also great to know. So hopefully you'll you'll pick up some good editing tips to um, to also at this point I'd like to ask that um, you use the questions section that I pointed out to send Ellen um, during this webinar any other specific features um, that I haven't listed that we'll be covering that you'd like me to cover so we can go through those at the end. Right, it's time to move into the Snapcoms Content Manager where we are going to get started. Right. So this should look familiar to all of you. This is the what we call the dashboard, the starting point of the content manager. So after you've logged in there, um, you select create content. You then find the yellow newsletter icon. Um, if you don't see it here, it means that you are not yet licensed for newsletters and you need to reach out to Ellen and she will arrange a trial or um, an additional license for your newsletters. So once you find it, click on newsletters and now you select your template. So the template is simply a layout template. It's a starting point. It's not the design template. Um, the design and branding we will apply um, in a few minutes time. So choose the layout that looks closest to the newsletter that you have in mind to create. Um, but it's very flexible and um, you can change the layouts on the fly. So don't worry too much about which starting layout you choose here. I'm going to choose two columns. You now need to give your um, newsletter a name. And for those who've been on my webinars before, I actually have um, notepad open here with all my notes in which I copy and paste um, as I go because it's it's a little bit tricky to, to, to type and, and talk and, and do everything else. So I've put in my newsletter name, that's newsletter issue one, and I choose which folder I'm going to save it into. Um, I have a folder called advanced newsletter webinars, and then I click create. Right, so now the newsletter designer interface, as we call it, will appear and you'll see placeholder content um, in the two column format that we selected, or it would be three columns if you had selected three columns. But before we get started with adding all that beautiful content I showed you, let's orientate ourselves on the designer interface. So I'm going to start top right where you have breadcrumb navigation showing you the name of the folder you're working in so that is our advanced newsletter folder and showing you the newsletter name moving top left you initially see three icons the preview icon we will use later once we've added our content to check how that's going to look on screen um, this is the designer mode toggle which by default is off i'll come back to that in a minute and the actions button includes things like rename, move, clone, disable, delete. And again, I'll come back to this converting to a content template later. Bottom left is where you tab between working the content of the newsletter, which is what's on screen now, and the content of the notification. Of course, the notification window is what pops up bottom right when the newsletter arrives and um, your staff can choose to read the read the newsletter now or later. Um, just a point to to um, well, something to point out: these two buttons are going to be moving to above the content pane where I'm pointing now. Functionality will stay the same, but um, that is um, coming in a release or two. So if those two buttons disappear from here, look for them again at the top. Right. So. On the, on the right hand side, you see the other configurations that have to be completed before this newsletter can be published. Publishing, you do bottom right by clicking the orange publish button. Some of the configurations do have preset defaults, um, but the ones in red need your attention before you can publish. And clearly we can see that we need to set this target audience. Um, on the newsletter before we can publish, but I'm going to come back to these configurations when we've finished creating the newsletter content. So coming back to the orientation, this big central area is called the designer canvas. And as I said, interaction with the designer canvas is switched off by default and I will toggle it on now. So the on switch for it is this um, pencil designer. Um, 
switching it on, you'll notice some changes to switch it off. I use this orange done button bottom right. So I'll do that again and point out the changes, switching it on with the pencil icon. First thing you'll notice um, is uh, the settings icon becomes available, top left. And if you move across to the right, you now see these drag and drop content modules, which we use to pull into the newsletter to build up the content and design the newsletter. Um, we'll get to those in a minute. Let's go back to the settings. Now the settings are really important um, and they do need to be configured before you add the newsletter content as they control things like the font of the newsletter, the font color, the font size, as well as the newsletter's overall dimensions and padding. So very important to set those up first so that everything you then subsequently add into the newsletter follows those same um, uh, that same branding or style. So, um, and as I said in my intro, all subsequent issues of, you know, in this case, the connection or our connection newsletter will be based on the template that we create from this one. So it's important to put in the time up front and, and get the settings right. So let's take a closer look at those settings. The first tab shows the general settings and you can edit the newsletter name and add an optional description if you find that useful. Now, the width of the newsletter is, um, is the width that it appears on your end user screen, so the size on your, on your staff screen. It's 800 pixels by default, but you can make that wider or narrower if you prefer. I'm going to leave it at 800 pixels. The height um, sets itself depending on the amount of content that you add as you build the newsletter, so we can ignore that field for now. Now, padding refers to the outside padding or the space between, I'm pointing to the edge of the newsletter and the content. Um, the default here is 30 pixels, which is quite wide. I'm going to change that to 10, which is a narrower, more, more elegant look. Okay, display animation. This is quite fun. Um, this controls how the pop-up notification and the newsletter appear on employees' screens. And, um, the default is a, is a smooth slide down, which is what you saw when I uh, opened the newsletter earlier. Um, the other options are to spin the newsletter onto screen um, or to uh, what's called tada, which is an eye-catching shake animation. So let's take a look at examples of those. I'm going to open my um, Snapcoms app again and let's look at a spin animation. There it comes, spinning onto screen, so that is pretty eye-catching. And um, now let's look at, ta-da. There it comes and gives a shake. So, so those are your options. I'll just show the slide down once again. Like I said, that's a more elegant slide down. And then you scroll within that. Right, let's click Done. Um, and going back to settings, um, let's look at the default styles for this newsletter. So open that settings tab, going to styles. And it, it's important to note here, there's two, it's two types of, of styling you can do as such. You can actually change the, the fonts and the colors for, for every single newsletter you do. Um, or as, as we recommend at Snapcoms and as we've built this tool, you can set up the branding for your organization. So you set that up once um, according to your brand guidelines set by your marketing team. And then you have all your newsletters inherit this corporate branding. So here I'm going to show you how to set up the branding for your organization. Um, just note also that not all Snapcoms administrators will have permission to change the organization branding. In, in fact, generally only high lev level admins who have access to the management area of the content management will see the option to edit the organization branding. Of course, that makes sense. You don't want um, anybody creating a newsletter to be able to to change the logo or, or change the color. Once that's set by a more senior administrator, um, that's kind of locked down. So currently, um, the branding that we set here is only used in these newsletters I'm demonstrating and for screensavers. But before the end of this year, we are going to be releasing 
new alerts and new tickers, which will also use this branding. Obviously, for existing customers like yourself, there'll be a transition period where you will still have your existing hard-coded templates available, but um, the future with the future of Snapcoms is where you will be able to brand all your own assets um, without ordering templates from Snapcoms. Mm -hmm. So let's click Edit Branding to open the branding screen. Um, and the first time you visit this page, so if Obviously, I've branded this now for Snapcoms, but the first time you visit it, um, there is generic branding in place. So I'm just jumping to um, one of my trial accounts to show you what it looks like. Um, so we've just got a generic logo in there, and the first thing you need to do is um, to change that logo. So, so what happens is the changes you make on the left are reflected um, in these samples on the right, so you'll see how that works as we go. Let's go and change the logo image. You need to um, select your logo in one of the supported image types from your PC. Um, you've seen what the Snapcoms logo looks like, so let's have some fun and upload the Google logo. I just want to demonstrate that what, what happens to the colors once you upload the logo. Um, oops, done, there's Google. So what what happens here is um, the system picks up the, the dominant color in the logo. So Google's blue is now picked up to be the primary color of, of the headline, the button color, and the link style color. So let me do that again. I'm going to change that back to the Snapcoms logo. And dominance here, of course, is the orange. And you'll see how that's picked up and displayed on the right. So that's how the logo and the colors work. Of course, I can override that. I can go and change my button colors to be anything I want. Um, uh, or I can reset to what it was. So you do have quite a lot of freedom here. Um, let's talk about fonts. Um, you can change the fonts to anything in this drop-down list. These are all available. Or if you have uh, your corporate front installed on computers, on, on all your staff computers, all you need to do is type in the exact font name here. Um, I'm going to be using Snapcom's Open Sans. Um, and as I enter that, watch what happens on the right. Um, it gives a bit of a shake to, to just show you what has changed. And um, I can do that all the way through changing the fonts to Open Sans. Of course, I can edit the font size, um, again, according to my, my corporate um, guidelines. So going back to where we were, I have everything in place now for um, Snapcoms, and I'm going to go back to the asset. Right, so we go back to the asset, and I'm going to open the designer again and open the settings and look at the very last tab. Um, which controls the notifications. Um, the default setting here, settings, all these settings are our recommendations, so you don't actually have to change them. Um, the recommendation is to have a pop-up notification window that appears bottom right and stays on screen for 15 seconds, announcing the arrival of the newsletter. Uh, if the user ignores that pop-up notification, it will reappear in 45 minutes time. Now, recurrence frequency, this this is my personal bugbear with our development team. Um, zero means unlimited, so leave it at zero to have the pop-up notification recurring until it is until it is clicked, in other words, until it is read. And um, other than that, you can change any of, of these, these settings. You can, in fact, deliver the newsletter directly on screen. So if you would like to really surprise staff with um, a spinning newsletter direct on screen, you can bypass the pop-up notification. Um, I don't see any um, reason to do a silent publish. Silent publish is where it appears in the, um, in the app. Uh, in the list, message list, with no notifications. The only reason you'd use that is if you notice perhaps a spelling mistake in the, the issue that went out and you want to silently correct that, that's when you would use silent publish. Um, so we click click done. And now one very last thing we can do before we add the content is we're going to discuss 
the background color of the newsletter and the border color. So to do that, we come across to the right where we edit the background settings. So the background color, um, well, first let me explain. You, you could, if you really wanted to, actually upload a background image for your newsletter. Um, not highly recommended here. I think the content should should do the selling, not not the background image. So I'm going to keep it on a color background. The background color is by default white. Um, again, I'm going to retain that um, because I think that's just the norm. But if you wanted to, you could could do a default color. If I used my default color, that would pick up my Snapcoms orange. And border color is also by default white. And um, here I do want to change that because I do like to have a frame around the newsletter. Um, although I don't want the orange, I'm going to switch to my corporate branding guidelines, which I have online, and I'm going to copy the hex value um, of that gray into the selector and set my background. Um, so now, with that border set, you can clearly see that um, padding, the 10 pixel padding between um, the content blocks and the border. Right, so that's, um, I know it's taken 10 or, 20, 10 or 15 minutes to explain it to you, but that's um, the setup and you only do it once, everything else is based off this initial setup. So ja um, Ellen, have there been any questions in this period of, of me giving my monologue? Um, nope, not any questions at this given moment. Okay, that's good news. Um, I'm going to keep going because, like I said, we've got a lot to get through. So it's time to add some content. The fun starts here. Let's remind ourselves of um, the newsletter we're going to create. So first things first, we start at the top and we need to add a image. Um, the layout we chose does have um, an image placeholder at the top. So all you do is click on it and select a pre-configured um, header image from your computer, open it up, and then select it. Now, this is a very good time to introduce the topic of dimensions. So I'm going to switch back. Let me just, um, I'll leave that there. Switch back to my slide deck and um, show you a little bit of a, a, a trick sheet that I've, I've written up here. So remember that we created the newsletter at 800 pixels wide and that I adjusted the padding to 10 pixels. So um, here's the information on the left. Um, the outside padding default was 30 and I changed it to 10 pixels. And that means the remaining width that we want the header image to fill is 780 pixels. So Going back to the content manager, I have actually pre-created my header to be exactly 780 pixels. Now, I could also upload a larger or a smaller image and resize it to fit. That's all possible. But for best resolution, um, always try to use an image size that is as close to the display size as possible. So um, once you've uploaded the header image, go to the size and location settings. Um, you will see that there is six pixels of padding around um, all the content blocks. I'm going to remove that because I've already got that um, 10 pixels um, between the border and the, this outside. I'm just going to stretch that slightly, and that looks perfect. So our header is in place just like that. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually remove all the other placeholder content. So to do that, you simply click on the item and delete, oops, I always do that, delete, click, delete. I, you, you could edit what's already there. I prefer um, in this instance to just start with a, a, clean, a clean slate. So next thing we need to do is add our newsletter information, in other words, the issue name just under the header. So to do that, we drag in the text module. So I choose the text module from the right and place it below the header. Um, now I'm going to go back to my notepad and copy in my information. Now, um, here's a trick. I'm going to delete the headline because I don't need a headline. When you're pasting in, um, I actually only found this out today and it's, it's a huge trick. Change this 
box from paste as HTML to paste as text. Reason being is that you will then retain this paragraph formatting, which will then mean that all your inherited um, formatting will remain. So there we go. Um, put it in place. Get rid of the space. Sorry, I'm going to have to do that again. We can right align it. And now I'm going to use this expand arrow. If I open that, you see that you can size to content. So if I click that, the row height snaps to size, and that looks just great. Looking good. So below, hello, Jane. We do have we do have a question, oh. and and that is um, someone is asking about the save capability. Ah. Is there an auto save, or do I have to hit save? I don't see you hitting save <laughs> for the presentation. Excellent. No, that's a huge um huge progress Snapcoms has made. We used to have save buttons on every page, but yes, this is um auto saved so at the bottom here you can see that there is a change log if I click on that I can actually roll back to um, any of the last five versions or if I just wanted to un undo one change I, I do that but um, you will notice let's say I highlight this um, watch the watch bottom right at the save um, icon and you will see that it's automatically saving so you're all good, don't need to save. I could exit right now without doing anything else and um, everything is saved. So that's that's a real bonus, good question. Okay, um, let's now add the two columns of text below here. So drag in another text block and um, we're gonna use this tool here, the columns tool, to resize this column to use one third of the width. I'm then going to duplicate that text box and resize that to be two thirds of the width. So you'll start be start to get an idea of the flexibility of the layout, how you can actually do whatever you want. Similarly, I could change that to another third and duplicate and have three columns. So pretty flexible there. But let's get on with adding the content. So this um, top left block is my um, introduction area and I'm going to paste in my introduction will seem strange for some of you but um, here in the southern hemisphere um, it is spring so that's going to be the topic of the spring of the September um, uh, introduction I also know that there are going to be four sections in my newsletter so for now, I'm just going to list them. This eventually will become my table of contents, but until I've added the content below, I can't link those to the contents. So just leave them as a list for now. Now, I want to make the intro text area stand out. So I'm going to change the background color of this text area. So I click settings. And um, again, I could use the default color of orange, but that's way too strong. So I am going to go and choose another one of my um, approved colors, which is Alto. And I'm gonna paste it in there. Done. Um, all good. So to reinforce the message about spring and to make this all a bit more eye-catching, I'm now going to add um, an image to reinforce the words. So um, here I'm going to show you how I can actually insert an image within a text area. So yes, we do have a singular um, image module, but now you can mix and match text with images. So simply put the cursor where you want to insert the image, click on the image icon, um, go and find your image, which I have um, some very cute spring lambs, just for you, Ellen. Um, <laughs> okay. And I'm going to insert that, but you can immediately see the problem. Um, that image I've uploaded is way too big. Right. So this brings us back to another discussion about dimensions. So let me come back. As you can see, I've, I've mapped this out, and I think once you've seen this visually, you, you get an idea of it, and, and you don't have to be exact, but if you, um, if you can upload images which are 
closer to the size you need, um, all the better. So the image I uploaded into this narrow column was 800 pixels wide, which is inappropriate. I can see here um, that with padding, because there is six, um, six pixels of padding on all the content blocks, um, so that's uh, to allow some space between the content blocks so that they don't butt up against each other. So if we do the math, um, that means that this image, the lambs, should be 248 pixels wide. So instead of guessing games, I simply go back to my sizing and I type in 248. That's perfect. I now use my expander to size it to content and that looks just great. So that's a little trick about sizing images within a text area. So to the right, we're going to have a message from our CEO, Chris. And so I'm going to type in the headline, oops, CEO comment, told you I should have pasted. And um, I like to add an icon next to the headline to make it um, stand out. So I'm going to, again going to insert an image within the text. I know that um, appropriate image size here is 50 pixels. So I have that pre-prepared, open that up, load it up. And that looks great. Now I'm going to copy in Chris's inspirational message. Now, this is where it's very important to paste as text. And that retains um, that paragraph formatting, which is very important. So I just need to put my paragraph spaces back. And that's great. And snap that to size. So the sign off from Chris, I think you remember you saw a picture of him. Um, for the sign off, I want to use Chris's picture next to his name. So the best way to handle this um, kind of formatting is to use this create table tool. Um, and I need a single row column, I mean, single row table. And I put it in the wrong place. Sorry about that. Um, let's put my cursor in the right place to get started. Um, single ro single column, so, sorry, single row, two column table. Um, scroll down, upload my image on the right. Again, I have my image um, correctly sized. There's Chris Leonard, our CEO. Um, that didn't seem to take. I think I'm clicking too fast. Hmm. I'll try one more time. Very strange. Let me try and add the text rather. Um, keep up the great efforts. Regards, Chris. And I'll try once more to do that image. No, that doesn't want to work. Um, I'll come back to that. I've got some kind of... Um, issue going on here. Um, I'll come back to that. Um, so uh, I was meant to have demonstrated how to use a table to align text next to an image, but I didn't quite succeed. Uh, like I said, I'll come back to it. Let's go on to the ticker. Um, tickers are great, very eye-catching to um, draw attention, and so I'm using them to announce to upcoming events at Snapcoms, I grabbed the ticker icon, I pulled it into place, um, and then you simply edit, you roll over and you click edit to edit the headline. I have my headline pre-prepared. We are all participating in Loud Shirt Day. Um, paste that in. Um, and for formatting, I want to change that from heading one to heading two size. Um, and I'm going to add a link to the event website so that if people click on the scrolling ticker, they're actually taken to more information about it. And, and Jane, yeah. I guess it's probably good to point out that they definitely need to make sure they include that HTTP or HTTPS in that link. That is correct. Yeah. Um, it, there is, it does say that in the help text. You're right, Ellen. Include the HTTP. Um, I think I'm 
done there. Let's look at ticker options. Um, I'm happy with the, the default uh, scroll speed is medium scroll speed. Um, you could go to fast or slow or very slow, but I'm going to stick with medium and I like it scrolling from the right. Um, all good. So last thing I want to do is change the ticker background color to use my default orange, which looks pretty good. And I'm going to leave the padding. The padding on tickers is by default zero. So that's done. Um, again, we need to size the ticker height to fit the content. So I use the expand tool there. And um, the last thing I'm going to do is actually change the font color to gray so that that stands out better against the orange. So I'm going to use that same gray and pop it in there. Fabulous. So that is our first headline all ready to go. Um, easiest way to do it, well I could simply add a headline but I'm lazy so I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to edit this one. I'm going to add in my next event which is our multicultural Diwali event. Um, I'm going to remove that headline because I don't have a headline on that one. Um, and we're good to go. So if I click off, I can see my ticker running and that looks super. All good. So we have um, done the first few bits. I will move ahead. The next piece of content is the sales update. Um, so I would like to put the text on the left and a graph with um, regional sales on the right. So the, the recommended way to do this would actually be to do um, the image and the text each in their own content block. The reason for that is so that when it's viewed on a small screen like a mobile device, the content blocks will stack below each other in a responsive layout. So let's add the text box below the ticker and adjust that to be half the width. Then we are going to pull in the image and add the image, which as I said, is my global sales chart. And that's done. I can stretch that to fill the box. Um, adding the heading again. Sales update. I'm just going to do this adding the icon one more time because I think you all get the idea. Um, there's my sales icon. Open. Insert. That looks great. Add my text. Again, remember to paste as text. There we go. And in this final note, I want to um, add a link to click for more details on Confluence. Confluence is our intranet here at Snapcom. So all I do is copy my link, um, highlight the words which will be in the link, use the link um, icon, um, paste over that, insert, and there we go. Jane, we have a question, and that is, what if you have longer articles? That, very good question. So I could, there's, there's actually no limit to how long this article is. So I could just take any other text and I could keep adding um, and I could expand that and I could keep adding um, and expand that and what would happen is either I could have two very long articles next to each other and leave it like that or I could do it like that and in the end result, you would actually have a scroll bar in your newsletter where people could scroll through the content. Um, what is still to come, and um, I believe is uh, bef before the end of the year, I hope, is a expand and collapse button for content. So I could actually put a long article in and then put a break in here and expand and collapse. But in the meantime, that's how we could handle long content. Um, either you link off to the bulk of the content um, on your on your 
internet or another source, or as I say, you just keep scrolling. Does that answer, Ellen? Yes, great, thank okay. you. Cool. Now, just to, to finish that off, I'm going to add what we call a separator, which is really just a, a line, line break um, below this article. Place it here. Um, the default height for a, a line is five pixels, which is perfect for me. And of course, I want it in my corporate orange. So that finishes that off, um, and that's really neat and tidy. Now, I'm just looking at the clock, and um, I was going to add two more um, content areas. Well, another one almost exactly the same as this. That was my people update. I'm going to skip that and go straight to my marketing update um, because that shows you how to add a, um, a slideshow module. So again, I'm going to add my text. I'm going to change my heading. Oh dear. Um, I'm going to add that in. Ooh. You see, that's what happened because I didn't paste <laughs> as some. Um, um, anyway, if that happens, all you do is you go back and change it to your, your paragraph formatting. Um, change it to half. And now let's demonstrate how to add a slideshow. Now, this could be a video. Um, video is as easy to add as a slideshow. In my case, I've got three screen grabs of the new product that I want to add. So I go and select my files. They are one, two, and three. Open them up. I can reorder them, but they have uploaded in the order I selected. I want to change my transition to a slide down, um, but I'm happy with that transition speed of, of five seconds. So. Let's just give this a bit more spacing. Um, and let's drag this a bit longer. And of course, we want another separator. Um, you could either drag in a separator or you could duplicate. Um, and then you simply drag it. Now, I say simply, I do have, oh, it's working. I do have problems sometimes on GoToWebinar with this drag functionality, but that's done. So the last thing I'm going to do is um, if we go back to our newsletter is this is a very common thing I see is where people like to include a row of logos or a row of images. So again, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to skip the headline because I think we all get the gist. Um, and I'm going to put my cursor where I need the, the um, table. Use my create table feature. This time it is a single row with six columns. Um, and I'm going to upload my six logos, which I have beautifully prepared. Um, they are 100 pixels wide. Again, I've kind of done the math within my dimensions and I have them pre-prepared. And there they all are, and I now just need to individually load them all up. Um, so it's as, as simple as that to get it, get it looking so neat and tidy. You can then select them all and center align them, right align them. Don't know why that one's not behaving. Um, Anyway, so you get the idea of, of how to do that. You could also add a link to one of them. Again, you highlight the, the image you want to link. So this, in this case, would link off to um, perhaps a customer's website. Um, add it in there. And we, ha we have the logo. OK. Um, I'm actually going to skip the rest because I am running out of time. And I'm going to move on to preview. So um, we oh, – sorry, I'm just <laughs> jumping ahead in my notes. Um, so select the preview icon on, on the left. And um, there's a couple of preview options. You can preview on desktop or on a mobile device. Let's have a look. Um, on our desktop. That looks great. What you're looking out for here is any vertical scroll bars that shouldn't be there, but it looks like um, everything has played nicely, so that looks great.
Great. Um, and then we need to check the notification preview. This is um, automatically generated um, from our branding and from the newsletter name. But I want to make that a bit more exciting. So I'm going to come to my notification. I'm going to firstly make it bigger, even bigger. Then I'm going to change the name to Spring News. I'm going to drag it bigger. I'm going to add the lambs. Um, I have those in the correct width. And then I'm going to change the background color to orange and change my font to white. Um, so here I'm overriding the font color to white. Um, that all looks a bit big. Scroll it up, scroll it up, and we are ready to go. So we are done in the design area. I'm going to click the done button, bottom right, and we're going to have a look at these other configurations we need to set before we can publish. Um, as I said, the items in red need our attention, so let's start with setting the target audience. I'm going to change that now to just target myself for testing purposes. So I've switched on advanced targeting, um, which allows me to target users only. And I'm going to target my desktop and my mobile phone. And that is done. In terms of dates, the default is to um, send the newsletter immediately and to have it available from the message list for one month. Now, given that this is my September newsletter, that's um, absolutely appropriate. But if this was a weekly newsletter, you would change that publishing to, to one week. Delivery options, that means um, how is it going? How is this newsletter being sent out? Well, by default, it goes to the Snapcoms app on desktop and any Snapcoms apps on mobile. I want to include a push notification to my mobile users. Again, I want to call that Spring News. Um, and in this instance, I am going to publish to web. That means that I can share this URL with anybody. Um, they don't have to have the app installed, and they can view the newsletter content um, via that that link. So that's Jane. It. We actually yeah. have two two quick questions. Sure. And um, one is, um, can you create a PDF from this? And the second is, is there a moderation workflow? Yes and yes. Um, can you give me two minutes because that's on one of the next screens that's coming up? Sure. Okay. So we have done the delivery options and in terms of settings, we have already taken care of this um, via our notification setting, um, which is a, a pop-up. So that's, that's all ready to go. Um, so now we're ready to publish. So we move to the bottom of the screen. We select the orange publish button. We get an on-screen um, confirmation message. And there, Ellen, are the options to either print. Now, if I choose that, I get a print window and my printer. I um, don't know why that's not looking great, but in theory, that should look better. How do I close that now? Oops. Oh dear. Oh dear. I just closed everything. <laughs> That's all right. You can always get right back to that one. <laughs> That's because of the auto save, everyone. Oh my goodness. That's me. the nice part. Okay, and while you we're doing do that, so, so you saw that um, I could print. Um, similarly, I could print PDF. Um, and in terms of moderation, the moderation for newsletters works exactly the same as it does for um, any other assets. So if an administrator doesn't have privileges to publish directly and um, you do have modification license, then instead of that publish button, you would see a send for, um, oh, now what's going on? Where's my newsletter? Should be the first one right there at the top. I know, there it is. But I haven't published it yet, that's why. Um, but it's still, yeah, but the good news is it's still there in that yeah. search capability, everybody. <laughs> anyway, so I got sidetracked. 
speak at some point. Yes. Um, I got sidetracked with print, um, PDF export, so I can choose to do A4 pages or full size, which is kind of all crammed into one page. So there's your print and your PDF. And like I said, if this administrator didn't have publishing rights, this orange button at the bottom would simply say send for moderation and then it would appear in the moderator's queue. So um, it, the moderation for newsletters works exactly the same as, as our other assets. So let's press publish and uh, we get some on-screen feedback. Um, not sure if you heard that. Um, we did. Notification did. on my phone. <laughs> that, that, that was the notification coming to my phone. Um, I can now choose to return to the item or return to the dashboard and we'll just give it a few seconds while we'll while we wait there we go the lambs have appeared we're very tempted to read now um, of course if I didn't read now if I ignored that notification it would go okay. away after 15 seconds and come back in 45 Jane, minutes time yep we we have a question are we going back to actually link the table of content to the respective <gasps> content oh my goodness me I forgot that sorry yes I am rushing let's do that thank you very very much um, Let's Thank scroll. you, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's um, scroll back up to our table of contents. Now, what we do is we select the the list, um, the item in the list, and now we use this um, very important icon here called um, the target. And what that does is you can see it gives you a map of your newsletter, so you can either just visually point to um, an area of the newsletter you want to to um, link to or um, how this works is it picks up all the H1, all the heading one formatting. So it lists them here. So I simply select sales update, done. That adds the link, new people, again, select content. Oh, I didn't do new people. We didn't do that section. <laughs> marketing update. It's the one we skipped for, for time reasons. Marketing up. Oh, okay, new people now goes to marketing. But you get the idea. Um, you can link it to to anything in in the newsletter so i hope that explains and thanks for pointing that out karen i will give this one more shot um let's try and add this table again let's try and put chris in there again yes this time it's working right align chris um let's add that um sign off from Chris let's write a line that let's format it as paragraph and now we can drag that column closer to his face to make it friendlier so um, I think that proves that we can do formatting within that so that looks way better Okay, so thank you for the for the the prompt. That's our um, table of contents, and that's we're linking to Chris. So in the last few minutes, um, what I'm going to quickly show roll forward to is because I've been talking about this is our first newsletter and um, it's our September newsletter. What happens um, in October? So let's roll around to October and see quickly how we'd create the second issue. So this is where we come back to um, this actions icon on the left um, and we use this feature of convert to, um, to content template this is the recommended way to go you could of course clone this newsletter but what we're going to do now is actually create a content template from it um, and you'll see that then when we start from scratch to create content we actually just select a template so clicking that I am going to give my template a name which I'm going to call it the connection template um, and again I'm going to put it in that same folder my advanced newsletter and I'm going to click create um, notice immediately what happens now is that you see a new background um, to distinguish that we are working within a template I can edit the template um, so I could go back and change um, anything I wanted to I could fix up my table of contents um, but what we do now is if we return to the the folder you will see that that template now exists 
um, with a new wizard-like icon. So that's sitting there ready to, to be used um, um, or to be edited in, in the folder. But let's say now it's the last week in September and we want to create our October newsletter. We create content and we scroll down and it hasn't worked again. Goodness me. Okay, I'm just going to, I had this problem earlier. Um, I'm just going to go back to my advanced newsletters. I'm going to delete that. There's some, something to do with naming convention. I've, I've used that name too many times before. Um, and so I'm just going to use a previous newsletter. I'm going to create a template from that. So this is actually a, a complete one. Let's create a template from that. This time I'm just going to call it template one and I'm going to put it in my advanced folder. Right, let's now try again to create content in October for, from that. Scrolling down now, this is this is expected behavior. Do you see that the template is now available in my list of content um, items? Or I could sort, use this filter here top right and sort to look for only content templates. And there I see it. Opening it up, I give it a name. This is going to be issue two. Um, put it in the folder. Create content. Um, and immediately I can jump into editing. Um, I don't even have to open the designer um, because I'm not changing modules at this stage. I'm not changing content blocks. So I just type issue 2, October 2017, and off I go. Of course, I could open the designer. I could remove entire sections if I wanted to. I could add other things there and, instead. Um, but um, I think you get the idea that once you've created your first newsletter, you've created your template, then you um, simply edit it for, for further editions. Um, so just in time, that concludes my, um, my demonstration. But Ellen, have there been any other questions um, while I've been rambling on? There are not at this moment, so let's give everybody just, you know, in the next 10 seconds or so, if you have any other questions, if you want to type them in there. So we could get those answered for you in the last minute. Sure. Um, I'll just um, stress again that we are very keen on on any feedback, positive and negative. Um, so, as I said, my name's Jane, and my email address oh. is Jane at Snapcom. So you can send any comments directly to me or via Ellen. So, is there a question now? We do. Someone is asking if you could demonstrate how to add a video. Oh, sure. Sure, sure, sure. That's no. And we also have a comment, and that is that there were no questions, but a big thanks that the session has been most helpful. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's always lovely to get that feedback. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete the slideshow. Um, oh, that's not working. Um, I don't know why. I'll just go out come into this one. Um, delete, switch on my designer, delete that, pull in a video. Um, now I do actually have something pre-prepared. So video choices here is we can serve directly from YouTube, Vimeo. Um, other would be if you have your video hosted um, locally. Um, or on, on, on your own um, CDM or on your own internal servers. But for these purposes, I'm just going to demonstrate how to link a YouTube video. Um, all YouTube videos will have a, um, an ID at the end of the URL. I have copied my ID, whoops, no, I haven't, from my notepad. Simply copy it in there. Um, these these features here, mute video. Um, I guess to get employee attention, you would have the video playing 
full audio when people um, received it on their screens, but um, definitely in testing and in webinars, I switch the, the sound off. Allow interaction again. Um, for your end users, you would want that video to auto play, so you wouldn't allow interaction. Um, but if you do allow it, then they can stop, um, pause, or start the video. So I'm going to leave those um, those off. Um, and what happens now is the system, your video. system does <laughs> the rest, drag it into size, and um, that would, if we publish this now, just to prove it's true, um, you know, that then plays within our newsletter, which is very, very unique for, um, you know, an internal newsletter functionality. Jane, we do have one more question. Is that is, can you have more pages for the newsletter? Hmm. Um, because, it's, because it's an HTML scrolling, pretty much a scrolling window there, there, there's no length there's no limit to the length of it but no if the question is do we have pagination no so it is really just one long scrolling page um so that's how it is at the moment and um i'd be interested but it can be as long as you want obviously absolutely. so so here what happened there um i wanted to show this video on screen oh there it is which was the one with the video? There we go. So that's how that would appear, you know, to users. So that's incredibly um, impactful. So that's how you would add a video. Anything else? Because I think we need to um, to that, sign off. That is the last question. So thank, thank you. Oh, that's such a pleasure. Um, I know it was a lot to get through. Um, it does seem like a bit of work for the initial setup, but I hope I demonstrated at the end that creating that content template um, makes things very simple going forward. Most definitely. Okay, good. Well, thank you, Ellen, and thanks everyone else for your time on, on your Tuesday morning. And um, I'm certainly ready for bed. And Ellen, you've got a long day ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Talk thank soon. you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.